Yo, 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 what it do now? Just to buy, yeah, you know, mine. So, sorry. <laughs> Here we are back again, y'all. So, man, I told y'all we was going to do this whole new four quarter type thing. And ain't no need to rehash. Let's just jump off and flip the first quarter. And today, y'all, I want to come and talk to you as somebody who is directly afflicted and afflicted affected by this bullshit, man. So, if you are one of the 26 million borrowers or one of the 16 million of the 26 who have actively put in an application for the Biden administration student loan debt relief program, I got some bad news for you. Um, yeah, that shit's on halt, y'all. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's on hold right now. Um, more bullshit and it's always the same culprit y'all i'm gonna give y'all i'm gonna give y'all three guesses there's only two parties that really matter right now right so i'm gonna give you three guesses at who what particular party decided to maybe try to get a judge to block the actual student loan relief debt i'm gonna give y'all three guesses all right first guess you already know that's right the red assholes bruh for some, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Why are they so vindictive? Why does it seem to just always be them, right? But that's where we're at with it. So six states, let me go ahead and tell y'all what six they were. They were Arkansas, Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, Nebraska, and South Carolina. And they had been trying their hardest to find somebody that would block the actual program. And it kept getting, you know, denied every time they would try you know, to bring it forward, it would be uh, dismissed due to lack of substance because there's no substance. And it's really interesting that somebody decided to actually take it. And this Judge uh, Pittman, you know, it seems to me that he's really trying to audition for a bigger role because everybody, and when I say everybody, I mean the legal consensus is that... This is a misrepresentation of the law and the way that he's going about trying to block this. It doesn't seem like he's actually interpreting the law properly. So let me go ahead and step back real quick. So part of the HEROES Act um, that had came out, I believe, back around like 2003, don't quote me on that, um, it was allowed or it changed the ability of the executive branch to start doing things like saying a national emergency, they had the power to do certain things in that event, right? So one of those things now is, well, they're saying student loan debt, that the president has the executive authority to do that due to what happened during one of these uh, acts that came out. Says, yeah, you can actually do this and if there is a national emergency, these are the things that you have the ability to do. Sorry, ran a circle around that, just kept saying the same thing. But anyways, so Biden has the ability to do such, right? But now they're saying that him using COVID as a national emergency was wrong and that this, that, and the other. Plus, they're also saying that this quasi-government group called Mahatma Hila, they're a uh, student loan servicing provider, and they are essentially are tied to the treasury within the state of Missouri. And they're saying that due to the uh, you know deletion of these, I guess you would say loans, you know that they're going to essentially not have any jobs and they won't be able to work and stuff like that. And okay, I'll give you all better. All right, they're saying that with the amount of money that they would lose from future tax revenue. They're saying that is illegal, but they're not taking into account that if you were to potentially lessen the burden on borrowers, how much more they could stimulate the economy if they weren't paying excessive amounts back for no reason, right? And I'm not saying that student loan debt isn't a reason to be in debt, okay? You went, you went to school, you did what you did. We're talking about the interest rate. We're talking about the exorbitant amount of pressure that is being put on people. And these degrees are becoming less and less effective. So now we're trying to figure out how do we handle this crisis? Because everybody was told, if you want to succeed, take your ass to school. Now it's, well, I can't get a job to do what I need to do to even pay back this. 
Well, you shouldn't have went to school. You should have went and got a job. Right. You see the contradiction? We can't figure out a way to handle this. But wait, we got a little bit of relief, right? No. Once again, like I told y'all, these six assholes decided that they wanted to block it. So now we got to see if the appeal that the Biden administration has put in is going to be effective enough to stop the block and actually be able to proceed with the applications. So what I'm going to tell you when it comes to this is one, be on the lookout and two, yeah, that's some bullshit, man. But they're saying that even though it is uh, temporarily blocked and halted, that they're going to keep the 16 million that they've already processed within the queue. So with their hopes that they'll be able to push through the actual you know, block or whatnot with their appeal, they'll be able to get back to process and everything like that. Could take a minute, might be able to end it right here at the federal courts. Or it might end up having to go to the Supreme Court, which is interesting because there is precedent for the Supreme Court siding on what potentially would be the federal government or the Biden administration. So keep your eyes open on that. Right. All right. And speaking of money, let's go to the second quarter real quick. I'm not going to get too deep into this one because it's still investigating and it's very, very interesting. But I don't know how deep you guys are into the cryptocurrency and all of that kind of stuff. But lately, shit ain't been looking too good for the future of it. And that's all in part due to this company, FTX. And there's this guy, Bankman Freed, who was considered the poster child for the future of what cryptocurrency would be. Are y'all starting to see a recurring theme? Y'all remember the girl from Theranos who was to be the next thing in the medical science institutions or whatever. And then the WeWork guy, and you keep seeing these, you know, bright eyed white kids who somehow luck off into something because they have a little bit of skill. And then all of a sudden everybody just invests in them without even trying to see like, is this real? And we keep seeing these huge billion dollar, you know, corporations that are started after some kid just drops out and decides he has a great idea and just gets a little bit of investment. And then we start to see all these celebrities. So with Theranos, we saw, you know, Larry Ellison from Oracle and we saw, you know, the president, uh, Clinton and all these other, you know, men that just admired her and was like, yeah, she's gone on to do this and that and this. And there's no way any of this is bullshit, even though it all became bullshit. And once again, we're seeing the exact same thing with FTX because we had a whole bunch of celebrities endorsing this shit from Steph Curry to uh, Tom Brady to Aaron Jones. Shout out to the pack. We beat the Cowboys yesterday. Y'all still trash. That's what you get. But anyways, <laughs> you know, a whole bunch of, you know, athletes and celebrities were going through campaigns and doing commercials and saying, hey, I'm getting into the cryptocurrency game. The easiest way to do it is to jump on with this FTX stuff. And now there were so many attempts at withdrawals. At first, it became four billion dollars of withdrawals that were trying to be taken out within like eight hours. And then it jumped to like six billion. And it got to the point where they couldn't actually take the money out because it wasn't actually sitting on anything because he was owning two companies, right? FTX and one called Alameda. And essentially, all of the money, all of the leverage, everything with the cryptos that they were using, the FTT coin was backed by the exact same company that he was actually still running. So if you can see the conflict of interest and how there was nothing actually backing shit, a lot of people lost a lot of fucking money. So you gonna really start to hear a lot more about cryptocurrency and is it feasible? What is the future of it? What is going to happen? Y'all definitely go look into this. And just like they did with the Theranos, just like they did with the WeWork and the other, you know, startups and stuff like that, you know there's gonna be some type of bio drama or docudrama or whatever you wanna call those. I know y'all don't like reading, so go check out the video when it comes out. Or just look it up on YouTube. It's very, very, very interesting. And you're gonna see a lot of names that you're like, well damn. I did not realize that that person, that person, that person were all connected to this one company that has completely faltered. And it is crazy to watch it. But 
like I said, I don't want to get too deep into that. We'll maybe do another deep dive. I'll do an update as you know things are going along. But the SEC and I think the Justice Department are both looking into um, an investigation. He could face criminal and civil charges. 30-year-old dude had a $15 billion wealth evaluation, I believe, and they lost billions and billions and billions. Remember Trump? Billions and billions. All right. Anyways, they lost so much money, and it is crazy how people are just playing with this dollars, and other folks are starving to death. Life is interesting. But anyways, man, third quarter. Right. I did not want to get political today. I didn't. I really did not. But y'all, I can't help it. Like, the, the fate of the state, like that, the fate of the state literally rests on Warnock versus Walker, and I'm 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 baffled. Like I'm literally baffled at how so many people agreed that Herschel Walker was not a bona fide moron and was competent enough to be one of the 100 senators representing the 300 something million motherfuckers in the United States. And the more and more I think about it, the more and more it blows my mind. Other than the fact that certain people have become so politically aligned with the party that they cannot, I repeat, they cannot see past anything other than the R or the D. And it seems like a lot of folks felt really, really justified in being able to vote for Walker just simply for the fact that he was black and it made them feel, I'm not racist, I will vote for this person right here, he's black and he stands for what I stand for. But when you ask them what exactly does he stand for, they don't have an answer. And it's because we saw back in 2020 that there was a huge, and I mean a huge thrust of active, you know, voter registration and voter education, getting people to the polls. And a lot of that was driven by minority, you know, organizations and groups. So they started realizing like, hmm, there might be something to this. So maybe we should throw up our own black face and see what happens. And guess what? They were right. There was enough stupid ass people that they got to literally vote for one of the dumbest men in America. And that is not hyperbole. If you have seen this man, as my man, <laughs> as my man Chappelle said on Saturday Night Live, he's a observably stupid. It's not that hard to really see, but my goodness, y'all. And that's where we're at right now. But there is one thing that I did not do when I came back on Friday, and I did not thank Gen Z. Now, we talk a lot about the sensitivities and the over-emotional and whatever when it comes to the generalizations and the stereotypes of Gen Z. But y'all, they showed up in droves to fucking vote because they understand the severity of what was going on. And based on certain numbers, it looks like the Gen Z population was able to stop what would have been the red wave of those 65 to 75 or 50 to 75 year old, you know, traditional conservative people who always come out to vote. So thank you, Gen Z, for stepping up and handling business like a fucking boss. Y'all really helped save democracy. And it's crazy that once again, we have to rely on the youngest generation that is actively able to vote to once again save democracy because the old grown-ups have fucked up again. It's, it's really getting old. Like, we know what the issues are. We know how to change it. And we have candidates that can do it. Yet, we have obstruction. And we have one party. I'm not saying the Democrats are dope. They're not. They suck. They trash. They are not great at all. Their messaging is horrible. Their policies are too wonky and too hard to understand. They do not know how to target their base. And they have way too many people that they try to cater and pander to. That is not to absolve them of any of that. But what I am saying is when it comes to literally tearing apart what America could be. And I'm not one of those true blue motherfuckers because I don't really believe that America has great ideals at all times. And I think the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution are both flawed, very much so. But regardless of that, there are certain sets of ideals that the United States is supposed to fucking live up to. And the GOP, even though they hide and masquerade themselves as the party of patriotism, they are nothing but obstructionists. And it is crazy to me that it is vividly vividly put in front of your face every day, every morning, every night, 
all the time. You see it. You literally see it. And then you still vote for it with the confidence that it is in your best interest. You are ignorant. And there is no other word to describe it. So, like I said, I did not want to talk about politics today because I knew it was going to get me a little riled up. And I really wanted to end it with a good meditative Monday for y'all. So as I say that, let's go ahead and get to the fourth quarter real quick and get into this meditative Monday because there's something that I wanted to talk about. When I say meditative Monday, I mean I need y'all to just sit inside yourselves. Just sit there. Just listen. Just think. Feel. Let it all wash over you and live in the present for a moment. And when you do that, you're going to start to like recognize that life isn't always as bad as we tend to make it out to be. Sometimes it's even a lot better than we ever imagined it could be. I want to tell y'all something, and I haven't really been able to say this yet, but <sighs> January 29th, and I've spoken about that day as a day that I almost killed myself. That day I had extreme suicidal ideation and I had a barrel inside my mouth. That was January 29th, 2022. Today is November 14th, 2022. And since that day, I have found so many reasons to live. I had so many reasons to end it, I felt. But y'all, I have done so much within that time. And I just got news yesterday that the nonprofit organization that me, my mom, and my best friend set up is now tax exempt and ready to move forward in 2023 handling business. But not just that, I've created music, I've done spoken word, I went on and spoke at a university about the trials and tribulations that have befallen upon me within my life. And yet, y'all, what I realized is that you have to keep going. You can't stop. I know, I know there's them days, them days where you, you wake up and it's like, God, we doing this again? I get it. Those days, they don't get easier. Life doesn't get easier. Life doesn't get better. I'm not going to lie. It doesn't get better. But you know what happens? You get better. You get stronger. You become a more capable version of yourself with every battle that you fight and every battle that you make it through. Y'all, I'm telling you, do not stop. I on January 29th, did not see me sitting here. I saw it over. I promise I did. But now I'm here and I recognize that I have potential. I have power. I have purpose. I have passion. And I'm ready. And I'm ready to move on. And I'm telling you that that day will come for you too. So on Meditative Mondays, what I need you to do is just sit and just let it all in and then let it all out. If that means you got to cry it out, if that means you got to scream it out, whatever, let it all out and recognize that you're still here. You still have a chance. You're still living. You're still breathing. You're still loving. Take some of that love. Give it to yourself. See you tomorrow.